great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. It is a great morning and you and I, we are part of it. We have lived to see it and we want to give God praise and thanks for sparing our lives to see this beautiful day in which that he has prepared for us. I trust that as we share in these devotions, that your heart would be encouraged. Let me ask, how are you doing today? I trust you're doing well. And as you wait on your devotion this morning, I trust that the devotion would really encourage your heart. We are looking at this amazing grace that God provides for each and every one of us. John Newton, he said, "'Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieve. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed." Wow. Annie Johnson, and the song, He Give It More Grace, the second stanza he wrote, when we have exhausted our store of endurance, when our strength has failed ere the day is half done, when we reach the end of our hoarded resources, our Father, full give it, is only begun. His love has no limit. His grace has no measure. His power have no boundary known unto men, for out of his infinite riches in Jesus, he give it and give it again. That's the God that we serve. He continue giving us the grace that we can go through every trial in life. He gives us the grace for every hour, every minute, every second of the day. Wow every day in the month, every month in the year, he gives us grace. Last morning, I stopped at God's grace was enough in his suffering. Speaking of the man, the Apostle Paul, we are studying 2 Corinthians in chapter 12, and we are looking at verse 1 to verse number 10, and there is where we are sharing these devotions from. I said to you that every one of us experienced some type of trial or testing. You say, well, I don't experience any. If you're a child of God, prepare yourself. Yours are on the way. Why? Because the trial of our faith gives us patience. So many of us, we don't have patience, you see. Those folks who you see always fussy, fussy. God is working on them so that they could be patient, but they're not paying attention to it. He is allowing trials to come so that they can become patient or we can become patient. Now, one Max, why do we experience trials? I shared with you last morning. We experience trials because it is part of the human parcel. It's just like we breed. Why do we breed? We breed to stay alive. Why do we eat? Why do we drink water? Why do we walk? These things are part of life. In Job chapter 5, verse 7, yet man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. So why do we experience trouble? Because it is a common experience of the believer. Paul, in his letter to the Philippian believers, he says, for unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe in him, but also to suffer for his name. Some people believe when one becomes a Christian, everything will be all right. You will have no more worries because now you are a child of God and you will have everything that you so desire. If you read the scripture and understand the scripture, you would know that is not so. Suffering sometimes is a gift. He says, for unto you it is given on the behalf of Christ. Whatever is given on the behalf of Christ, it's a gift. He said, not just for us to believe in him, but also we must suffer for his sake. Second Corinthians chapter 12 and verse seven said, 
And this is the Apostle Paul. He said he had this revelation. He was taken up into the third heaven. The things he saw, the voices he heard, he said he will not even utter anything what he heard or what he saw. Then he said in verse number seven of 2 Corinthians 12, lest I should be exalted above measure, lest I should be proud, lest I should be lifted up. What would cause him to be lifted up? He said, through the abundance of the revelation, the things that he saw in the third heaven could make him feel superior. He was taken up into the third heaven. Not many folks can say that. He said, but lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me. And he repeats the word again. He says, lest I should be exalted above measure. Let's notice some things about this. First of all, let's notice the nature of Paul's thorn, the nature of this thorn in the flesh that he spoke about. Let me say to you today that it was real. It was not a carnal desire because if it was, Paul will not glory in such, he would never glory in a carnal desire. He said in verse nine, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmity. So if it was something carnal, he would not have glory in it, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So this thorn that he had was real. It was not some miserable member of the church. Sometimes people say, boy, that person is a thorn in the flesh. No, it was not that. It was not an unbeliever. Some unbeliever, somebody outside of the church, just, what must I say, harassing him. No, it was not that. It was not guilt of what he did before salvation. Sometimes someone may have done something and that thing just plays on your mind and doesn't leave you. And even though one may have asked God to forgive him, it was an informative, a weakness. It was physical and it was painful. It was a serious botheration to him. This thing was a thorn in his flesh. If you have a thorn in your flesh, let's say you got it in your foot. Every time you walk and you step on it, it bothers you. This man had something bothering him in his flesh. Now, one may say, but why didn't he pray and be healed? That's a good question. I am sure that you would realize that there are times that Paul prayed for people and they were healed. I'll make mention of this in another devotion as we go along. But he also prayed for himself. He was not healed. The next thing I want to share with you is the purpose of it. Why was he given this thorn in his flesh? When unpleasant things happen to us, we usually ask God, why did you Permitted. This is where every believer should stay and pay attention to God and His will for each one of us. His will for my life may not be His will for yours. What was God's purpose for this thorn? What was God's purpose for this discomfort? In Paul's case, the purpose was revealed to him. Next morning, we would pick up on why God gave Paul this thorn in his flesh. Our Father, there are many today with thorns in the flesh and do not understand. There are many, Lord, who are just calling upon you every day and wondering why you don't remove it. 
Lord, as we study these devotions, help us to understand, Lord, that you give us enough. God, to go through every day, even with the thorns in the flesh. Lord, I pray that you will be with each believer, O oh God, who may have such. May they continue serving you in spite of what they are going through. Would you have your way? Thank you so much, God, that you are in control and you know what you are doing. Oh, Paul is going to show us how you know what you are doing, and that's why you do what you did. Have your way with us. And Lord, I thank you for every partner who share in these devotions. Lord, if they can do nothing more, just impress upon their hearts to get the word across the globe. Lord, every day, add new people there, God, to help to get the word further. Thank you. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you as you share these devotions. Do have a great day. I'll be back next morning.